All right, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the types of Facebook groups. Now, there's so many different ways to go with Facebook groups that I've really broken this down into three main categories. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you what I recommend for most churches. So first category is your target audience. Are you gonna go external or internal? External being uh, something or built around an idea or an interest or something you have in common, a hobby, a job. Uh, it could be something like mothers of preschoolers in Lee Summit, church marketers. These are really external interest-based groups. It could be great just for going on a relationship journey with people in your community, getting to know them first and not even leading with your church. So that's external. Now, internal is going to be much different. These are going to be uh, groups connected to your church with people who already know and are some level connected with your church. They attend your church. They've come to an event, the programs or a ministry in your church, kids or youth, students, whatever it is. So that's going to be internal, primarily used for internal community building and internal communication. So you're going to have to decide which target are you going after, external or internal. The second kind of category is is really the privacy. How open or closed do you want this group to be? Do you want anybody anywhere all across social media to see content happening in your group? Or do you want some level of privacy, a closed group or a secret group? Really is gonna determine how open you are with the content and the conversation happening in your group. And then the third level is really, uh, a category is features. What features, what type of group is this? And, and Facebook's gonna ask you like, what are you really trying to accomplish with this group? Is this an event-based group? Is this really you're building a community for doing some sort of uh, act of service together? Um, and then what features do you wanna turn on learning units, which can be super cool. We'll be talking about that in a future episode. You want to turn on the ability for people to find a mentor. So Facebook is always adding new features, but you're going to have to really determine, okay, what is our big goal for this group? And then how do we accomplish that goal bet between choosing our target audience, choosing our privacy level, and choosing the features we want to enable. And as you set up your group, Facebook's going to simply walk you through all of those steps. Now, here's what I recommend and what we'll really unpack in this course is gonna be one, internal. We want this to be an internal group for people who are connected some way to your church. And I would just say this, for most churches it's gonna be, if they look like a legit person in your city or community, I would let them into your group because really it's a place for internal conversations and building that relationships and going on a journey. Now you can always boot people out later if they turn out to be a troll. You probably don't want people all over the world unless they're a missionary connected with your church. Um, so really focus on people who live in and really operate in and around your church and hopefully at some point are either going to be connected with your church or are connected. So internal for this discussion, privacy level, I like a closed group for a couple of reasons. One, I actually think it will grow faster, which a lot of church or pastors are like, it's a little bit counterintuitive because if it was open, what more people find it and get into it. And I actually think with marketing, there's something about having a group where it costs something to get in. It's almost like a little bit of an exclusive club and it, there's an, a more increased interest level of getting into something. And, and which secondly, also when there's a little bit of privacy, it's going to help your community really develop in this rich conversation that isn't available to everyone, which is going to make it even more attractive to get in. And when people know that there's a level of privacy, that what they share in the group can't just automatically be shared all across social media, they're probably more willing to open up, share, which deepens those relationships and deepens the community going on in your group. Now, you do have to be uh, mindful of those levels because if there's something happening in your group, you wish, oh, I wish everybody knew about this. Well, then it's smart to know that up front and say, hey, let's post this topic on our Facebook page share it into the group, and now you can kind of have the best of both worlds. But I think a closed group makes the most sense for building a tight-knit community, for actually growing your group. And then what I love and what we talked about in a previous episode is building your database because you can screen people to make sure that the right people, you can collect their contact information, getting into that closed group, and that actually I think could even be more important than the group itself. So you're gonna need to determine that right up front and then when in doubt, just go with what I recommend, a church-wide, one church-wide group, just name it the name of your church plus group. Uh, and then it could be a closed group for now. You can always change that down the road. And then we will go from there. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you over in the next episode.